Humans, being remarkable innovators, excel in the realm of invention. Each creation, regardless of its scale, plays a crucial role in advancing humanity. Yet there are certain innovations that stand out for their profound impact, sparking a cascade of further discoveries. Here we delve into a few inventions and innovations that have fundamentally altered the course of human history. The mastery of fire by early humans marked a pivotal technological breakthrough in our evolution. Fire served as a multifaceted tool, providing warmth, illumination, and protection against nocturnal predators. It also facilitated the creation of more sophisticated hunting implements and introduced the practice of cooking food. These cultural advancements spurred human dispersal across diverse landscapes, fostering innovation and altering dietary habits and societal behaviors. Moreover, the ability to harness fire extended human productivity into the darker and colder hours of the evening. Scholars contend that evidence for the controlled use of fire by Homo erectus dates back as far as one to two million years ago. Microscopic traces of wood ash, indicative of deliberate fire manipulation, have garnered wide support among researchers, with notable findings dating to around one million years ago. Excavations at the Daughters of Jacob Bridge in Israel unearthed some of the earliest conclusive evidence of controlled fire use, with traces dating back approximately 790,000 years. Furthermore, archaeological investigations at the same site revealed signs of fire being utilized for cooking purposes around 780,000 years ago, though debates persist regarding the onset of cooking with some proposing an earlier timeline around 1.8 million years ago. Discoveries in Morocco indicate that early Homo sapiens began utilizing fire approximately 300,000 years ago, evidenced by flint blades found in proximity to fossilized remains. Notably, early modern humans demonstrated systematic fire use for heat-treating silkrete stone to enhance its suitability for tool-making around 164,000 years ago at the South African site of Pinnacle Point. Evidence suggests that anatomically modern humans widely controlled fire around 125,000 years ago, marking a significant milestone in our evolutionary journey. The evolution of fire usage and control unfolded gradually, progressing through multiple stages. Initially, there was a shift in habitat from dense forests, where wildfires were common occurrences, to savannas characterized by more intense fires. This transition likely occurred around 3 million years ago, as the East African savanna expanded due to cooler and drier climatic conditions. The subsequent stage involved early humans interacting with burned landscapes and foraging in the aftermath of wildfires, a behavior observed in various wild animals. In the African savanna, species such as savanna chimpanzees, vervet monkeys, and certain birds exhibited a preference for foraging in recently burned areas capitalizing on the abundance of resources available. Another pivotal step in fire control was the utilization of residual hot spots left behind by wildfires. Foods found in these areas were often burned or undercooked, prompting early humans to experiment with placing undercooked foods on hot spots or retrieving them from the fire to prevent burning. This necessitated a deep understanding of fire behavior and its potential benefits. Early efforts in fire control likely involved transporting fire from burned to unburned areas and igniting them, offering advantages in food acquisition. Over time, the practice of maintaining a fire for extended periods, such as throughout a season like the dry season, may have led to the establishment of base campsites. The construction of hearths or fire enclosures, such as circles of stones, likely emerged as a later development in fire management. The ability to produce fire often achieved through friction devices like the bow drill, represented a significant advancement in fire control. Each stage in the evolution of fire usage could vary in intensity, ranging from occasional or opportunistic use to habitual reliance and eventually to a state of being unable to survive without it. The discovery and mastery of fire revolutionized the lives of early hominids, offering a myriad of benefits and opportunities. Primarily, its warmth provided vital protection against the chill of nighttime temperatures, enabling the expansion of human habitats from tropical zones to temperate regions. 
The blaze served as a deterrent to predatory animals, particularly during the darkness, enhancing safety and security for early humans. Fire also played a pivotal role in transforming dietary habits. Cooking food over flames allowed for a significant increase in meat consumption and caloric intake, contributing to improved nutrition and overall health. Moreover, early humans quickly learned to utilize fire for food preservation, employing techniques such as drying and smoking meat to ensure sustenance during lean seasons. Additionally, fire became integral to tool manufacturing for hunting and butchering, showcasing the versatility of this newfound technology. Furthermore, the deliberate use of fire for strategic purposes emerged among early hominids. They realized that starting controlled bushfires could enhance land fertility and clear terrain, facilitating easier hunting and gathering. Evidence suggests that fire was even utilized to corral and trap prey animals, showcasing early innovations in hunting techniques. Moreover, the practice of clearing caves with fire laid the foundation for shelter construction marking a significant advancement in human habitation. The mastery of fire facilitated profound changes in human behavior, health, and energy expenditure, paving the way for geographic expansion into previously uninhabitable regions. With the aid of fire, early hominids could venture into colder climates, overcoming the limitations imposed by their lack of body hair. Evidence indicates sophisticated management of fire to manipulate ecosystems dating back to at least 200,000 to 100,000 years ago, highlighting the enduring impact of this technology. Moreover, fire spurred innovations in tool and weapon manufacturing, further enhancing the capabilities of early humans. Archaeological discoveries such as the Schoningen Spears dating back to around 400,000 years ago demonstrate the deliberate use of fire to harden wooden spears, enabling their use as thrusting weapons. Similarly, findings from South Africa reveal that early humans utilized fire to alter the mechanical properties of tool materials, producing finely crafted blades and arrowheads for hunting and butchering. This innovation may have marked the advent of the bow and arrow in hunting, representing a significant technological leap forward. The utilization of fire extended beyond mere survival needs, encompassing the realm of art and ceramics. Archaeologists have unearthed remarkable Paleolithic artifacts, including Venus figurine statues crafted from stone, ivory, and fired clay, marking some of the earliest examples of ceramics. Additionally, fire played a crucial role in the creation of pottery, challenging previous notions of its origin. Fragments discovered in China's Xi'an Rendong cave date back approximately 20,000 years, predating previous estimations by millennia. The Neolithic Age witnessed a surge in pottery production, with intricate designs adorning these vessels, reflecting advancements in craftsmanship and aesthetics. The societal impact of fire was profound, shaping early hominid communities and fostering social development. The ability to control fire conferred prestige and social status, potentially contributing to social stratification within groups. Moreover, fire extended daytime activities into the night, fostering increased social interaction around communal hearths. Such gatherings likely played a role in the development of language, enhancing communication and collaboration among individuals. Fire also necessitated cooperation within communities, as larger groups worked together to maintain and utilize fire effectively. This collaborative effort may have included individuals of varying ages, with older members contributing wisdom and care for younger members. Ultimately, fire influenced the size and dynamics of early hominid communities, fostering interconnectedness and mutual reliance. The cooking hypothesis proposes that the advent of cooking played a pivotal role in human evolution, particularly in the expansion of brain size. By analyzing the nutritional benefits of cooked food compared to raw food, proponents of this hypothesis argue that cooking enabled early humans to obtain more readily digestible nutrients, fueling brain development. Additionally, cooking facilitated the absorption of critical nutrients, such as docosahexaenoic acid, essential for brain evolution. Critics, however, contest the notion that cooking alone spurred the increase in brain size, highlighting the multifaceted nature of human evolution and the role of various factors in shaping our cognitive development. 
Before the discovery of fire, the diet of early hominids primarily consisted of plant parts rich in simple sugars and carbohydrates, such as seeds, flowers, and fleshy fruits. However, certain plant components like stems, mature leaves, and tubers remained largely inaccessible due to the indigestibility of raw cellulose and starch. The advent of cooking transformed this dietary landscape, rendering starchy and fibrous foods edible and expanding the range of available food sources. Cooking also neutralized toxins found in certain foods, such as cyanogenic glycosides in linseed and cassava, making them safe for consumption. Moreover, cooking had several physiological benefits, including the elimination of parasites, reduction in the energy required for chewing and digestion, and increased nutrient availability from both plant and animal sources. By breaking down tough proteins like collagen and carbohydrates, cooking facilitated the consumption of meat in larger quantities, thereby becoming a staple in early human diets. Studies indicate significant improvements in caloric intake and nutrient absorption from cooked starches and proteins, leading to enhanced survival and reproductive rates among hominids. The origin of language has long been a subject of scholarly inquiry, drawing upon diverse fields such as paleontology, linguistics, anthropology, and archaeology. Scholars grapple with the challenge of interpreting indirect evidence from the fossil record, contemporary language diversity, studies of language acquisition, and comparative analyses of human and animal communication systems. Despite the scarcity of empirical evidence, Numerous hypotheses have been proposed to explain the emergence of language, each offering distinct perspectives on how, why, when, and where language might have originated. One prominent divide in linguistic theory revolves around continuity versus discontinuity theories. Continuity theories suggest that language evolved gradually from earlier pre-linguistic systems among human and primate ancestors, while discontinuity theories propose that language emerged suddenly during human evolution as a unique trait unrelated to non-human communication systems. Proponents of continuity theories emphasize the gradual development of language faculties through genetic and cognitive evolution, whereas proponents of discontinuity theories argue for a single transformative event, such as a genetic mutation, leading to the emergence of language in its modern form. Transcending this divide, some scholars advocate for a social transformation theory, positing that the emergence of language was catalyzed by changes in social structures that fostered increased levels of trust and cooperation among early humans. This perspective highlights the role of social factors in unlocking latent genetic potentials for linguistic creativity, ultimately leading to the development of language. Ritual speech coevolution theory exemplifies this approach, emphasizing the interplay between symbolic capacities and social dynamics in the evolution of language. Given the lack of direct historical evidence for the emergence of language, scholars rely on indirect methods to infer its origins. Comparative analyses of sign languages and studies of early human fossils offer insights into the developmental stages and creative processes involved in language emergence. Additionally, researchers examine genetic markers and archaeological evidence for clues about the anatomical and behavioral adaptations associated with language use. The time frame for the evolution of language spans millions of years, from the phylogenetic divergence of Homo from Pan to the emergence of full behavioral modernity in Homo sapiens. While opinions vary on the timeline and specific developments, Scholars generally agree that language likely emerged in Sub-Saharan Africa during the Middle Stone Age, coinciding with the speciation of Homo sapiens. Statistical methods applied to linguistic diversity suggest that vocal languages began diversifying within the human species at least 100,000 years ago, highlighting the deep roots of language in human evolutionary history. The journey of stone toolmaking traces back at least 2.6 million years ago, marking the onset of the early Stone Age. This epoch commenced with the crafting of rudimentary stone implements by early humans, known as Olduin toolkits. These toolkits comprised fundamental implements like hammer stones, stone cores, and sharp stone flakes, 
reflecting the earliest attempts at crafting tools for various tasks. Around 1.76 million years ago, a significant advancement occurred with the emergence of Acheulean hand axes and other large cutting tools. This development marked a notable progression in tool-making sophistication, showcasing early humans' evolving craftsmanship and ingenuity. As time progressed approximately 200,000 years ago, the pace of innovation in stone technology surged during the Middle Stone Age. Toolkits from this era featured versatile implements such as points, suitable for hafting onto shafts to create spears, stone awls for perforating hides, and scrapers for preparing materials like hide and wood. During the later Stone Age, innovations in toolmaking reached new heights as experimentation with diverse raw materials expanded. In addition to stone, early humans began utilizing materials such as bone, ivory, and antler, demonstrating their resourcefulness and adaptability. The craftsmanship of tools also improved significantly during this period, reflecting a refinement in techniques and an emphasis on precision. Moreover, the later Stone Age saw the emergence of distinct cultural identities among different human groups, each adopting unique methods and styles of toolmaking. This diversity in cultural expression contributed to the proliferation of distinct toolmaking traditions, reflecting the rich tapestry of human creativity and innovation. The Bronze Age heralded a monumental shift in human history as it marked the advent of metalworking, with bronze tools and weapons supplanting their earlier stone counterparts. This transformative era is believed to have begun with the ancient Sumerians in the Middle East, a region often referred to as the Cradle of Civilization due to its pivotal role in the development of agriculture and the emergence of the world's first cities. Evidence suggests that humans began smelting copper as early as 6000 BC in the Fertile Crescent, laying the groundwork for the Bronze Age Revolution. The ingenuity of ancient Sumerians may have paved the way for the Bronze Age by introducing the alloying of tin with copper to create bronze, a metal superior in hardness and durability to its constituent elements. This breakthrough significantly enhanced the efficacy of tools and weapons, propelling human societies into a new era of technological advancement. Archaeological findings indicate that the transition from copper to bronze occurred around 3300 BC, marking the definitive end of the Stone Age, characterized by the predominance of stone tools and weaponry. The Bronze Age dawned at different times across the globe, with civilizations in Greece pioneering bronze metallurgy before 3000 BC, while regions such as the British Isles and China embraced the Bronze Age later, around 1900 BC and 1600 BC, respectively. Central to the Bronze Age was the emergence of states or kingdoms, characterized by large-scale societies governed by a centralized authority under a powerful ruler. These Bronze Age polities engaged in multifaceted interactions encompassing trade, warfare, migration, and the exchange of ideas. Notable kingdoms of this era included Sumer and Babylonia in Mesopotamia, as well as Athens in ancient Greece, each leaving a lasting imprint on human history. The Iron Age emerged between 1200 BC and 600 BC, succeeding the Stone Age and Bronze Age as a pivotal period in human history. During this epoch, societies across Europe, Asia, and Africa transitioned to the manufacturing of tools and weapons using iron and steel, marking a significant technological advancement. The defining characteristic of the Iron Age was the widespread adoption of iron and steel over bronze, a shift that occurred at varying times across different regions as the technology disseminated. In Mesopotamia, the Iron Age commenced around 900 BC, while in India, it began approximately 1200 BC. Central Europe embraced the Iron Age around 800 BC, while China transitioned to iron technology around 300 BC. Notably, the Nubians, having acquired iron working knowledge from the Assyrians, emerged as major producers and exporters of iron, further contributing to the dissemination of iron technology. The onset of the Iron Age coincided with the decline of several prominent Bronze Age civilizations, including the Mycenaean Society in Greece and the Hittite Empire in Turkey. This period witnessed the destruction of ancient cities like Troy and Gaza, 
disruptions in trade routes, and a decline in literacy across the region. The causes of the collapse of these Bronze Age kingdoms remain debated, with potential factors including earthquakes, famine, socio-political unrest, and invasions by nomadic tribes. Some scholars speculate that interruptions in trade routes may have led to shortages of copper or tin, essential components of bronze, prompting metalsmiths to turn to iron as an alternative. Iron tools played a crucial role in the development of cultures and societies during the Iron Age, enabling the establishment of kingdoms and facilitating agricultural advancements. Iron, being tougher than bronze, allowed for the creation of sharper tools such as swords, spears, plows, ards, and sickles. The introduction of iron-tipped plows revolutionized agriculture, increasing crop yields and facilitating farming practices. Additionally, innovations such as the wood pole lathe empowered woodworkers to produce a wider range of practical items from wood, contributing to economic and technological progress during this transformative period. Agriculture stands as the cornerstone of nearly every economy, serving as the primary means of cultivating food through farming practices. It is the backbone of human sustenance, responsible for producing the majority of the world's food supply. In the distant past, before the advent of agriculture, human survival relied on hunting, scavenging, and gathering foods from the wild. There were no deliberate efforts to plant seeds and cultivate crops. Instead, people relied on nature's bounty for sustenance. However, with the emergence of agricultural practices, the dynamics of human societies underwent a profound transformation, ultimately leading to the ability to sustain a global population. The origins of agriculture can be traced back many millennia, with historians generally pinpointing its beginnings in Western Asia. However, various populations worldwide independently initiated agricultural practices, Approximately 10,000 years ago, agricultural communities began to emerge as humans transitioned from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle to a more settled and cultivated way of life. This shift involved the cultivation of crops and the domestication of animals to support and sustain burgeoning populations. Over the course of several thousand years, many animals crucial to human survival, such as cattle, chickens, and horses, were domesticated. This process of agricultural development and domestication was spurred by factors such as changing climatic conditions, population growth, overhunting, and advancements in technology, all of which continue to influence the agricultural industry today. The transition to agriculture and the domestication of animals played a pivotal role in the rise of civilizations across the globe. While farming necessitated more labor-intensive efforts compared to hunting and gathering, it offered increased caloric intake and economic opportunities. With a stable food supply, human populations expanded, giving rise to settled communities and organized societies. The advent of agriculture enabled individuals to pursue diverse roles beyond farming, leading to the emergence of professions such as soldiers, artists, scholars, and priests. This societal transformation also influenced political and religious ideologies, shaping the development of rules, social classes, and governance structures. Over time, agricultural societies evolved complex systems of land ownership, currency, and food distribution. The history of mathematics is marked by a progression of abstract concepts. Animals, including humans, likely grasped the concept of numbers as one of the earliest abstractions, Understanding that collections of objects like two apples or two oranges share a commonality in their quantity. Prehistoric peoples, as evidenced by bone tallies, may have also recognized abstract quantities such as time, counting days, seasons, or years. More complex mathematical evidence emerges around 3000 BC, when Babylonians and Egyptians utilized arithmetic, algebra, and geometry for various practical purposes like taxation, construction, and astronomy. The oldest mathematical texts from Mesopotamia and Egypt date back to 2000 to 1800 BC and mention Pythagorean triples, suggesting the ancient and widespread nature of the Pythagorean theorem. Babylonian mathematics introduced elementary arithmetic and a place value system, 
along with the sexagesimal numeral system still used today for measuring angles and time. In the 6th century BC, Greek mathematics emerged as a distinct discipline, with figures like the Pythagoreans considering it a subject of study. Around 300 BC, Euclid organized mathematical knowledge using postulates and first principles, laying the groundwork for the axiomatic method prevalent in modern mathematics. Euclid's Elements is regarded as one of the most influential textbooks in history. Archimedes, often considered the greatest mathematician of antiquity, made significant contributions to calculating the surface area and volume of solids, using methods resembling modern calculus. Greek mathematics also saw advancements in conic sections, trigonometry, and the beginnings of algebra. The Hindu-Arabic numeral system, developed in India over the first millennium AD, spread globally through Islamic mathematics. Indian mathematics further contributed to modern trigonometric definitions and infinite series approximations. During the Golden Age of Islam, particularly in the 9th and 10th centuries, mathematics flourished with significant innovations building upon Greek mathematics. A standout achievement was the development of algebra, while advancements in spherical trigonometry and the addition of the decimal point to the Arabic numeral system also marked this period. Many prominent mathematicians of this era were Persian, including Al-Khwarizmi, Omar Khayyam, and Sharaf al-Din al-Tusi. The translation of Greek and Arabic mathematical texts into Latin during the Middle Ages facilitated the dissemination of these ideas throughout Europe. In the early modern period, Western Europe witnessed a rapid acceleration in mathematical development. Innovations like the introduction of variables and symbolic notation by François Viette, the invention of logarithms by John Napier, and the introduction of coordinates by René Descartes revolutionized mathematics. The development of calculus by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz further transformed the field. Leonhard Euler unified these innovations and formulated numerous theorems, establishing a standardized terminology. Astronomy has been a fundamental aspect of early civilizations, with one of its most significant applications being timekeeping. The study of celestial bodies and their movements provided invaluable insights for developing calendars, essential tools for religious observance, agricultural planning, and governance. Evidence of early astronomical activity dates back to around 20,000 BC, as seen in artifacts like the Ashango bone, believed to be a lunar calendar. Calendars, rooted in astronomical observations, became vital for tracking time and organizing societal activities. The production of calendars posed a challenge, requiring an understanding of the lengths of both the solar year and the lunar month. Early calendars, such as those developed by the Babylonians, Chinese, and Egyptians, often included 12 months with alternating 29 and 30-day months to synchronize with the lunar cycle, resulting in a total of 354 days, a shortfall compared to the solar year. To reconcile this discrepancy, Intercalary months were occasionally added to realign the calendar with the seasons. Innovations like the 19-year cycle proposed by Meaton, refined by Calippus, aimed to improve the accuracy of predicting when to insert these additional months. Julius Caesar introduced the Julian calendar in 46 BC, featuring 12 months and leap years to closely approximate the solar year. However, over time, discrepancies between the calendar and the solar equinoxes emerged, necessitating further adjustments. Under the direction of Pope Gregory the Petit, Christopher Clavius devised the Gregorian calendar in the late 16th century, refining the Julian calendar by omitting certain leap years. This modification brought the average length of the calendrical year closer to the true solar year, addressing the drifting equinoxes and ensuring greater accuracy in determining dates. Meanwhile, Persian calendar reforms in the 11th century prompted scholars like Omar Khayyam to make remarkably precise measurements of the length of the year. Khayyam's meticulous calculations demonstrated an understanding of the year's duration to a degree of accuracy unmatched in his era. Calendar reforms have not been confined to ancient history. Notable reforms occurred even in more recent times. For instance, Following the French Revolution, a calendar reform in the late 18th and early 19th centuries aimed to secularize the calendar and align it with decimalization efforts, 
reflecting broader societal changes. Through the millennia, the development and refinement of calendars exemplify humanity's quest for precision and organization in tracking time, reflecting advancements in astronomy, mathematics, and societal needs. The Scientific Revolution, a profound shift in scientific thought occurring in the 16th and 17th centuries, brought about a new understanding of nature that replaced the dominant Greek perspective of nearly two millennia. During this period, science emerged as a distinct discipline separate from philosophy and technology, with a focus on practical applications. By the end of the era, science had supplanted Christianity as the central focus of European civilization. This transformation led to several key changes, a shift towards abstract reasoning over common sense, a move from qualitative to quantitative views of nature, the conceptualization of nature as a machine rather than an organism, the development of an experimental scientific method aimed at providing definite answers within specific theoretical frameworks, and an emphasis on explaining how rather than why. The influx of information resulting from the scientific revolution strained traditional institutions and practices. Merely publishing scientific findings in expensive books was no longer sufficient. Information needed to be disseminated widely and quickly. Natural philosophers required independent and critical confirmation of their discoveries, leading to the establishment of scientific societies. These societies, starting in Italy in the early 17th century and culminating in renowned institutions like the Royal Society of London and the Académie des Sciences of Paris, provided platforms for scholars to examine, discuss, and critique new discoveries and theories. To facilitate these discussions, scientific papers began to be published, replacing the previous practice of concealing discoveries in obscure language or private jargon. New standards of reporting were established to ensure experiments and discoveries could be replicated by others, emphasizing clarity and precision in language and methodology. Failures to reproduce results cast doubt on original reports, prompting a rigorous pursuit of nature's secrets through collaborative scientific inquiry. The steam engine stands as the quintessential symbol of the Industrial Revolution, representing a transformational shift in power generation and transportation. From its humble beginnings in the 17th century to its widespread adoption in the 19th century, the steam engine revolutionized industries, mining operations, and transportation networks. Prior to 1750, the traditional reliance on water as the primary power source for industries was well established. Water wheels, driven by streams and rivers, provided a proven and widely available source of power across the British landscape. However, the dependence on water posed limitations, such as the need to be situated near suitable water sources, vulnerability to freezing or drying up, and constraints on transport due to reliance on rivers and coastal trade. Additionally, animal power was utilized but proved expensive to maintain due to the costs of food and care. The development of steam power began with early experiments in the 17th century, notably with Thomas Savory's invention of the machine for raising water by fire in 1698. However, Savory's design had limitations, including a tendency to explode, and progress was hindered by patent restrictions. Thomas Newcomen's engine, introduced in 1712, addressed some of these limitations and found early application in Staffordshire coal mines despite remaining expensive to operate. The pivotal advancement in steam technology came with the contributions of James Watt in the second half of the 18th century. Watt's enhancements to Newcomen's engine, including the addition of a separate condenser, significantly improved efficiency and fuel consumption. Collaborating with industrialist Matthew Bolton, Watt further refined the technology, culminating in the creation of the rotary action steam engine in 1781. This innovation enabled the steam engine to power machinery directly, marking a crucial breakthrough for industrial applications. Despite the significance of steam power, its adoption was initially slow. Many industries had already undergone substantial growth and development before steam power became widespread. Factors such as the high initial cost of steam engines, the conservative attitudes of some industrialists, 
and the inefficiency of early steam engines hindered rapid adoption. Moreover, the small-scale nature of much industry meant that alternative power sources sufficed until coal prices fell, and industries expanded sufficiently to necessitate more powerful and efficient steam engines. Ultimately, the steam engine's evolution from experimental beginnings to mass production played a pivotal role in driving the Industrial Revolution forward, facilitating unprecedented levels of industrialization, mining, and transportation. Despite its gradual adoption, the steam engine's impact on shaping modern society remains profound and enduring. The digital revolution represents a monumental shift from traditional mechanical and analog electronic technologies to digital electronics, fundamentally altering the way information is stored, transferred, and utilized. Emerging in the latter half of the 20th century, this era marks the transition to what is commonly referred to as the information age. The digital revolution has birthed a plethora of groundbreaking inventions that have reshaped society and revolutionized the way we interact with technology. At the heart of this transformation lies the transistor, a revolutionary invention in 1947 that laid the foundation for subsequent technological advancements. This miniature electronic device paved the way for the development of more energy-efficient and cost-effective computer system components, propelling the digital revolution forward. One of the most significant impacts of the digital revolution is the evolution of computers. As advancements were made in transistor technology, computers evolved to incorporate more complex processing circuits and storage memory. This enabled computers to handle both programs and data with greater efficiency, facilitating a wide range of computational tasks. The advent of the Internet stands as a hallmark example of the digital revolution's transformative power. By the 1950s and 1960s, governments, militaries, and organizations were already harnessing computers to manage complex data and operations. Simultaneously, scientists began exploring the concept of time-sharing between computer users and the potential for wide-area networking. The introduction of the ARPANET in 1969 marked a pivotal moment, laying the groundwork for the Internet as we know it today. This interconnected network of computers facilitated remote communication, file transfer, and email, revolutionizing human interaction and information exchange. Another significant development in digital data technology is the discrete cosine transform, DCT, a compression technique that became fundamental to the digital revolution. The DCT served as the basis for various digital media compression standards, including digital image formats, video coding formats, audio compression standards, and digital television standards. This innovation played a crucial role in enhancing the efficiency of digital communication and storage, contributing to the widespread adoption of digital technologies. The impact of the digital revolution extends beyond communication to encompass various aspects of daily life. In the 1980s, digital devices began to proliferate, with automated teller machines, ATMs, industrial robots, electronic music, video games, and computer-generated images becoming increasingly prevalent. Home computers gained popularity as millions of people embraced digital technology, while the first mobile phone made its debut in 1983, paving the way for the widespread adoption of digital cell phones in subsequent years. Additionally, the invention of the digital camera in 1988 revolutionized photography democratizing access to image capture and storage. In essence, the digital revolution has unleashed a wave of innovation that continues to shape our world profoundly. From the transformative power of the internet to the ubiquity of digital devices, this revolution has fundamentally altered the way we live, work, and communicate, heralding a new era of connectivity and technological advancement.